I think people had a fundamental misunderstanding of who the voting electorate was going to be this year. I think that's why a lot of the public polling was wrong, that's why a lot of the survey research was wrong this year, and a lot of the other lower level campaigns in the country just didn't see the trends that ended up playing out on election night. Massive increases in rural older voters, decreases in younger African American vote, slight increase in Hispanic vote, all of these things made a different mix of the electorate that we'd never seen before. Behavioral psychology is such a broad term. There's a lot of different pieces of it. What we really focus on is, is a methodology called Ocean 5, or the Big Five met methodology. The whole idea behind it is the way that we have marketed to people for the last 30, 40 years is now outdated. It's been very demographic based, the idea that because you're a woman between the ages of 25 and 45, you should be given the same message as every woman in that bracket is frankly offensive. We find that personality is a much better driver of motivation and behavior than any type of demographic marketing is, and that's how we use it in the political and the commercial sense. In terms of technology, automation today is huge. I mean, data science techniques, machine learning, AI, that stuff is innovating over time, some rapidly, some things slowly, but in terms of database infrastructure and the idea to process, manipulate, move data back and forth at, at, at speeds we've never seen, because campaigns are so quick by nature, you have very few months to win an election across the whole country, that allows us to be quicker and more efficient in the terms of the ways that we're talking to people and also the ways that we're collecting information. We are not geishas, we don't have a crystal ball in terms of our, our job is not predicting elections. What we do is try to figure out who to talk to and what to say to them. And if our modeling is good, it can lead us to very good conclusions on the electorate. What we saw in terms of predicting the election was really trends that unfold on election night. Some of the things that I've talked about previously, understanding how different geographies and different demographics groups showed up to vote this year um, was part of our success in terms of predicting the election outcome. This wasn't a very binary election in terms of you had a generic Democrat run against a generic Republican. This was much more you had Donald Trump, who's a figure within himself, versus Hillary Clinton, same on that side. And the types of voters they appeal to in terms of issues, whether it be trade, immigration, wages, are much different than jobs, national security, and, and taxes, which most traditional Republicans care about. Most of Mr. Trump's schedule was very data informed in terms of where he hosted events and rallies. What we tried to do was quantify the greatest density of persuadable voters in an area combined with enough core supporters to have a good rally. And that influenced where he would go, whether it be Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Florida in the last few days. If his travel schedule seemed erratic to the press or to the public at that time, it was very much driven by a data strategy that was reinforced by winning 270 electoral votes. Sharing lessons from something like a political campaign I think is valuable because we are the ultimate form of a startup or a business entity where we have a definitive amount of time to spend a lot of money and recruit a lot of people to support a cause. So it forces innovation in our industry much faster than I think it does in some of the commercial areas. So giving some of the best lessons learned to some of the actors here who are doing data targeting, who are doing marketing, who are building audiences, I hope can progress the speed of innovation um, and maybe piggyback on some of the stuff that we've learned this year in the political process.